Good morning. Welcome to worship. Very glad to have all of you here with us today. We have to speak a little bit louder because of these fans. Uh, just a word on that. Um, we are working to get this remedied, but all told, I've been in warmer places. I've worshipped in warmer places. This isn't too bad. What's going to happen in the late service? Well, that's, that's going to be their problem, right? <laughs> also, one more quick word on masks. Um, for those of you who maybe have not heard, uh, we are not requiring masks any longer in any of our worship services. That also includes our Monday evening service. Uh, for those who may want a little bit more of a distance, who are still trying to kind of maybe work their way in, uh, we do lift up our Monday evening service, at least for the time being. There's ample opportunity to space out there. Um, if you have any questions about that, talk to Pastor Snow, uh, talk to myself um, about why we did this and what our path moving forward is. But I think most of us should be on the same page with that. Moving into our service today, last week the family and I were, were driving around and my wife remarked to me, it's amazing how just a few weeks ago it seemed that the trees were just starting to bud. But now the leaves are full, the plants are growing from the ground. It really is a way of showing that in the right time, at the right place, things grow. The same is true with our faith. At the right time, in the right place, God brings about faith. He nourishes that faith. Look forward to having Pastor Snow share that with you today. But now as we begin, we begin our time together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, but stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the sovereign. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season. And his leaf does not wither, and all that he does he prospers. rise for our time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you and for His sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by His authority. I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, you alone as creator sustain and provide for this wonderful creation and for all that we need for our body and life. Plant, nurture, and grow the seed of your word among us that your kingdom may grow here within your church and be a blessing to our community and to the world. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our Old Testament lesson appointed for today comes from Ezekiel, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 22nd verse. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and will set it out. I will break off from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel will I plant it, that it may bear branches and produce fruit and become a noble cedar. And under it will dwell every kind of bird. In the shade of its branches, birds of every sort will nest. And all the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. Dry up the green grass and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken and I will do it. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. We rise out of reverence for the reading of the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. And he said, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It's like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately, to his own disciples, he explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. By the congregation to be seated. Well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be here, great to um, have such a full uh, sanctuary today. 
I debated um, whether to have the kids come up yet, and I think I'm going to wait just for another week or so uh, before that happens. But you parents can be talking about that. I don't want to have um, you make that decision on the fly and have kids um, saying, I want to, or no, I don't want to. So just know that that's coming. Uh, I look forward to a time when, uh, when we can have the kids up front again. Uh, what a great blessing that will be for us uh, again as we return uh, to uh, maybe what once was um, and to a new normal for us. But I brought some seed packets today. I brought beans and uh, a garden bush slicer hybrid cucumber, and then I brought a straight eight. I don't know what the difference are uh, between those cucumbers. Maybe one is straight. Um, some dill, some rosemary. And what do, what do we have to do to these, right? Will they grow right here in this packet? They're not going to grow in this packet, right? What, we, what do we have to do? We have to plant them. Uh, turns out I haven't had a lot of extra time. <laughs> and these really are going to go in my garden. And um, we'll pray for a, a, a late winter. Uh, let's see how that goes. Or if you have things in your garden that are growing, and you think, yeah, pastor's garden is not going to grow anything. But when, when we put these, when I put these seeds in to the ground, then do they just grow by themselves? Do we have to take care of it? Would I have to take care of my garden? I have to pull the weeds. I have to water. I have to be patient. I have to wait sometimes. But can I make this grow? If I put them in the ground and I say, hurry up and grow, will they grow right away? I'm behind. I haven't even put it in the ground and it's mid-June. I need you to hurry. Can I hurry up my garden? I can't. Uh, turns out that's all up to God. And it's His timing. Because no matter as much as we want something to grow or to stop growing, sometimes uh, you kids are growing so fast and your parents might say, stop growing so fast. I want to enjoy what I have. Or maybe they don't like uh, the season that they're in and saying, hurry up and grow. Um, there is the growth that comes only from God and that He allows us to plant and to water and to, uh, to take care of those things that are around us so that in His time, which is always perfect, knowing that the Lord blesses us with the growth, uh, growth of our faith. He plants the seed of faith into our hearts when we're baptized, and then your parents are, are nourishing and growing and making sure you get enough sun and enough water and uh, that there are not weeds around you so that you can grow into the man and woman that God has created you to be. So the Lord bless you today as you know that God's timing is perfect even when ours is not and that the growth belongs to Him alone. Thanks again. Uh, consider that uh, as, as uh, these weeks come on um, so that we're not surprising you uh, when we say, hey, kids, come forward. Um, you know that that time, too, is coming in his time. God's timing is perfect, and His way is always right. His path is always straight, 
So as he plants today for you his word into your heart, into your mind, into your lives, that you too may grow and flourish in his time. To God be the glory. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 7 days in a week, 4 weeks in a month or so, and 12 months to a year. God created time. Not for him, not because he needed it, because our God, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, is not bound by time or space. But God created time for our good, to measure the seasons, to measure our days. He created the world in six days. Not that he couldn't do that in an instant and say, hey, let's have a world, and there it was, but instead to order time. And God said it was good the first day, the second day, the third day. And then he rests on the seventh day. He did it so that he might bring order in his time, not in ours. We are, we are his. The seasons are his. The days are his. And as we follow him, we continue to grow until he comes again. That's his promise, is that he will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. The kingdom of God is near. The parables that we have uh, in the gospel lesson today, those parables, as Jesus spoke in parables, and without parables he didn't speak to them because they couldn't bear to understand all that was happening. And so he speaks in familiar terms. They knew what farmers were. They knew what seed was. They knew that there was soil and water and time. The farmer, nothing like a farmer. Think of the farmers that you know. Maybe you don't know any but I know quite a few. And as I talk to them in these drought-filled days, there is one thing on their lips, one thing on their minds, and it's rain. And I would say, what are you going to do? How's the crops? We need rain. Yeah, we sure do. And they say, well, it's not up to me. We pray for rain, but it's in God's time. God's providence to deliver. We can't make those seeds grow. And as they sprout, uh, they need the, that nourishment. But it has not yet come. But make no mistake, in God's time, in God's time, He will send the rain for our yards, for our gardens and for the farmer's fields. It doesn't all happen at one time, this growth, when it does come. First the blade, then the ear, then the full grain. But the harvest has not yet come. Every day that the Lord does not come for us, we pray, come Lord Jesus. And every day that the Lord does not come shows his long suffering, shows that he is patient, showing that he wants all people to be gathered into his barn in the end of time. We say, Hurry up, Lord. Change our life, Lord. By the decisions we have made or the ones that we have not made, by not planting my garden yet, I made a decision that maybe that's not the first thing on my to-do list. Is it important? Yeah, will I plant it? Yeah, probably today, because you'll ask next week. Uh, you got your garden in? 
God's timing is perfect. And always in all times, as we want more, faster, and we want to see the end result in an immediate fashion, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. In God's timing, it is for us. Patience. It's not something that we're very good at. How much time do we have left? When do I have to have it done? Look how I've spent my time. We have squandered it. We have wasted it. We have maybe tried to take as much care of that time as we could, yet it gets away from us. Our timing is not perfect, but God's is. The Word of God is something that we are to plant, we are to sow, we are to seed. We are to be seed flingers, if you will, to sow in all types of soil, regardless of how we think something might grow. Now, I'm not going to talk to them about the gospel. I'm not going to talk to them about who Jesus is because they don't believe it anyway. Leave the timing up to God to live your life, to be who you are created to be by the Lord's timing, by the Lord's hand that He has created you in uh, His image an image that only Jesus can restore. Faithful is His Word. Faithful is His promise. And the time will come when He will gather all who believe in Him into His uh, garden, into His uh, heavenly mansion. These parables starts out small and it grows even though we can't see it even though we fully don't understand how it works. I mean, you talk about germination of a seed. You can talk about um, how much and the temperature of the soil. Most of us don't know that. And even as much as we know, we cannot make it grow. That is by God's hand. I want to introduce you today to a young man from Seoul, Korea, that he did not grow up in a faith-filled home but he came to Mayor Lutheran and he heard the word and it was planted and he went home for the summer but he came back for four years this young man studied for four years this man lived in a faith-filled home for four years the family that he lived with did not press on him, did not push him, did not make him do something that was not his own. He was not baptized until last week. He goes home today, I think. He said to his uh, parents here in the United States, I think it's time to be baptized. What? What do you mean? You want to be baptized? Yeah, I think it's time. I asked him before I baptized him uh, in the lake about a half hour from here. I asked him, why is it, Junior, that you want to be baptized? And he said, well, if I don't do it now, I think I might miss my opportunity. To go to Seoul, Korea, where... There is faith, but it is few and far between. It is almost a drought-filled country that I might miss my time to have the seed of faith planted that it might be nourished. And so he was baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not in our time, but in God's time. It's perfect 
the timing. And we think, well, now what about the growth? How will he be nourished? How will he be fed? How will that gospel message, how will the law and the gospel strike him? How will he know that he is a sinner and in need of saving? So it is for us today. God's timing is perfect in every way and every time. To speak our faith, uh, the words of the Apostles' Creed, a faith that continues to grow within us, a faith that is sure. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that you might know that you are baptized, that you believe, and that the growth belongs to God. May that be true as we speak these words together, as we stand in a garden, as we grow now and speak those words. Please stand. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the whole church, that the seed of God's word, though small in comparison with what the world around us thinks is great, may grow but sure, slowly, yet surely, in God's timing, offering shade to all who seek its refreshment. Lord, in your mercy, let us rejoice with those who rejoice this day, that they may be certain that God's amazing grace is the source of all blessings we have in this life and in life everlasting. In thanksgiving for marriage, we ask your blessing on all of those couples who are celebrating anniversaries this month, and we give you thanks for the gift of a daughter to Allison and Chad Clemens. Lord, in your mercy, let us mourn this day with those who mourn. Today especially, we lift up the family of Jackie Forbes, of David Clausen, and many others. That they too may know God's kingdom has come to those who believe in his promises. May we take God at his word and look forward to the day when we receive his glory along with all of those who have died with Christ. Lord, in your mercy... And let us pray for all of those who are ill and those who are suffering in any way. They may have the fellowship of God's people around them with the promise that the prayers offered up to God on their behalf are powerful and effective and that God answers those prayers in his perfect timing. Lord, in your mercy. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who teaches us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Just a brief announcement as we depart one another's company. Um, the biggest announcement that we have is our VBS program is coming up in just a very short amount of time. If you are interested in volunteering, we'd ask you to please sign up through our church's website today if possible. It would help us make sure we have enough volunteers and in the right places. Also, if you volunteer to bring anything in, please bring that in as soon as possible so that, again, we can have an accurate accounting we have a very, very large turnout this year. We are blessed that this program has grown, and we are, want to make sure that we have all the resources we need to effectively share God's word, the hope of Jesus, with these children. <clears throat> with that being said, we depart with this blessing. So we depart in his name and plant the seeds of saving grace. Go out into the world in peace and faith. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoice in the power of the Holy Spirit who waters, who sustains, and who grows the seeds of faith that have been planted. The Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you until His perfect and eternal kingdom comes. Amen.